What's up everyone, it's Q from Retro Q Gaming, and this video is basically a rhetorical question. Now, it's a rhetorical question that has what we could call answers, which does it, is it really a rhetorical question at that point? That's some philosopher shit right there. But anyway, as you've probably discerned by the name of the video, the Valve Corporation. Why does Valve no longer make games? Now, that's that's essentially the rhetorical question, but there's obviously reasons for it. Right? Would there be exact answers? Who knows? Only Gabe Newell knows. Lord Gaben. Praise, praise Gaben. But anyway, I digress. So, why do we think Valve... Now, I'll, before we get into it, uh, or before I get into the actual thing, but why do we think Valve no longer makes... Consistently, at least, no longer makes games. Now, don't forget, Valve is the company that is behind such games like Counter Strike, Counter Strike Source, Counter Strike Go. Uh, well, Go, C CS Go. It's a global offensive. That's it. Yeah, global offensive. You've got Dota Two. They also have Half Life and the Half Life series. So, Half Life, Half Life Source, Half Life Two, Half Life Two Episode One. Half-Life 2 Episode 2, and what we will never see, most likely, Half-Life 2 Episode 3, or Half-Life 3. Left for de they now own Left 4 Dead, they worked, They acquired the license off Turtle Rock Studios, so not only did they, they work pretty closely with Turtle Rock Studios for Left 4 Dead 1 and 2, but they actually own the series now. They obviously have the Portal series for Portal 1 and 2, and Team Fortress, so, you know, Team Fortress 1 and 2. Or... You know, now that I think about it, I don't think I've ever heard of Team Fortress 1. And I've been playing games for a long, long time. But it could just be before my time. I don't remember. But that's back on to... We'll, we'll actually move on to the question itself now. So, why does Valve no longer consistently make games? Now, I think there, there are several, there's several obvious reasons. One, a, a game requires a lot of investment obviously I um, mean there's there's concepts there's art there's ideas there's pre-production there's actual development time and production time stuff that changes they they want to try fit their their view of the game and the universe and all and into their current system and make sure it fits into a, a modern set uh, not setting but uh, make it make sure it has a place in in the modern world that we have so that's one reason, obviously. Now, another is they make so much money off the Source Engine. <clears throat> Excuse me, I think I slurred those words together. They make so much money off the Source Engine, which is obviously Valve's engine that they use for the majority of their games, as well as they can license out to other people. So there's, there's a lot of income coming from the Source Engine and its licensing. And the most obvious one, really, is Steam. Now... I remember when Steam first came out. Steam was nowhere near what it was today when it first came out. When Steam first launched, I'm sure most of you already know this as well, but when Steam first launched, it was literally just an online DRM service to unlock Half-Life 2 to prevent, or try prevent, piracy of Half-Life 2. And then over the years, it began blooming and budding into into what we know now, and obviously now it's the, the world's premier storefront for digital PC gaming, and, you know, you, you really can't talk about PC gaming without involving Steam at this point now. Uh, so, obviously, the amount of money they're making off Steam is ridiculous. So, that that's that's probably, in my opinion, their most, their most likely and, and pretty much valid, really, reason for not making games consistently anymore. Now, there are obviously other factors in play, and there's there's arguments on the other side as well. Like, for example, Steam, or not Steam, uh, Valve, because they have so much money and so many talent, talented people working for them, and the ability to have a team of however many people they feel they need to hire whatever expensive writers, directors, creators, whatever... Uh, they have the money and the, the ability and the pull to actually be able to do all that. They they could pretty much do anything that they want with games and make anything that they want with games. Now, I know 
of course, because it's Valve, games like, well, there's really only one, there's really only one we're talking about at this point, Half-Life 3, Half-Life 3 is obviously a massive, massive, it's one of the games that would fit into the same, used to, well, used to fit into the same bread as Shenmue 3, as a possible Final Fantasy 7 remake, I know, those are arguably bad examples now in 2015 post E3 because obviously with what's happened and all. But don't forget, these are both series that had been going on for a long time. Well, all three of them really without the significant installment that we were expecting. And essentially, in the case of Half-Life, that we were promised. Because yes, Lord Gaben did announce, uh, what was it, a trilogy of... Uh, episodes for Half-Life 2, so it was going to be Half-Life 2, Episode 1, 2, and 3, and then 3 was obviously cancelled, so, yeah, and there's obviously such immense pressure that were they ever to make Half-Life 3, or Half-Life 2, Episode 3 even, there's obviously such immense pressure for it to live up to. Now, be, like I said, because, because of Valve and the money they have, they could pretty much afford to hire the best of the best to do to make that game but at the same time because of the fans and the world we live in and just changes in gaming and the fact that it could be too different or too similar or i'm sure people will find any any excuse and arguably anything any reason and anything wrong with it to bitch about half-life 3 or the perceived quality of it when if it was ever to come out now because of that I can understand why Valve don't make Half-Life 2 Episode 3 or Half-Life 3 or just generally games uh, in, uh, not games in general, but yeah, games in general now. Obviously, they still focus a lot on Team Fortress 2. Team Fortress 2 has, from what I know, has a constant support from Valve on, on Steam. I don't play Team Fortress 2 myself, but I, I know people that do and there's... There's, I, and there's almost always articles I see around about it. It's the same with uh, Counter Strike and Dota, Dota Two. So, you know, there's there still seems to be fairly fairly solid support on on those online games for from Valve themselves. But there, there's other ones as well. I mean, obviously, let's let's take a look at, at Portal, the Portal series. So we we obviously only have two main games at the moment. There's Portal One and Portal Two. So Portal Three, despite being what, what would it, <laughs> I was like coughing and laughing at the same time. There, excuse me. Um, what would essentially be the, f- the the first proper Valve game with the word Three in the title. So other than that, and how much that would blow everyone's minds, myself included, it makes me wonder. I mean, Portal Three, uh, Portal One, Portal One was basically a sleeper hit. It came out of nowhere, and. It was, it was a great game, and then Portal 2 basically built on top of it, and that was an even better game. Now, be, unless they leave it for like 10 years, Portal 3 won't have to live up to, say, something like Half-Life 3. Now, personally, I don't think it has to live up to something like Half-Life 3 anyway, because they're, they're, both, they're both very different game series. They, they're, there's no comparison between them. Not in quality or anything like that. It's just it's it's like comparing a racing game to a platformer. They just You don't compare them. It's not the same thing. So, it's, it's, the longer they leave it, the worse off it is for them. I'm not saying pump out games every year, pump out games every two years, but just, I would like to see some of these great series with great developers, like Valve in this case, just actually continue on their series and make another game that would obviously be fairly well received. I, I, this is a perfect example for me because I really do like this game and the, these two games that I'm about to list and this series that they're in. Left 4 Dead 1 and 2. I, I love them. They're great games. And obviously, you know, they have to they have to balance it. They'd have to come up with ideas and new characters, voice actors, make all the stuff, test it out, all that shit. Obviously, there's, there's a lot of uh, involvement and investment into it. But again, Left 4 Dead 2, or Left 4 Dead 1 and 2, they're still both great games. And they're, they're played fairly consistently on Steam with a fairly, fairly large user base. So, I mean, even in the case of Left 4 Dead, 
or Left 4 Dead series, I should say, it would be nice to see another another entry in it, another significant entry anyway. Like I I don't want to I don't want to have to buy a fucking DLC map that gives me one new map and what is it? I don't know one new map and two new weapons and one new special zombie or something like that. Just full game, you know. Let's come out with f- whatever amount of levels, four new characters, bunch of new special effects, new weapons, new couple of new systems. Like they added the melee weapon system into Left 4 Dead 2. But, I mean, Valve have so much potential. Now, obviously, anyone listening to this video knows Valve have so much potential. Valve themselves have so much potential. They've got a great stable of game series to work with. And they've got the money and the talent to just do whatever they want with it. So, it, having said that, on the flip side, with the Source Engine money they're pulling in and the Steam money they're pulling in, it's completely understandable why they don't want to be bothered or why it seems like they don't want to be bothered making games anymore. Or at least consistently making games anymore. Who knows? I could be wrong. By the time this video goes live later tonight, there could be an announcement of Half-Life 3 confirmed, Left 4 Dead 3 confirmed, Portal 3 confirmed, Team Fortress 3, Dota 3. But there's no, you can't, there's no real numbers on Counter-Strike. There, it could be like a mad Valve collection. Of, that's a collection of all the, the, tr- the third games in their series. So, who knows? It could happen. Personally, I'm not holding my breath, and that is unfortunate to me. There's, like I said, so many times in this video, there's so many great Valve series that I do enjoy, and the the games are usually extremely high quality. And I wish for more. Like any sensible gamer, I would like more of what I enjoy. And yeah, it's just a bit disheartening. But anyway, let me know in the comment section below what you think about the whole Valve situation. Uh, let me know your opinions on why you think they do or or why you think that they do need to make more games, why you think your opinion on why they're not making consistent more games, why if they're just focusing on set or online ones that are current at the moment. Let me know all that kind of shit in the comment section below. I want to hear everyone's opinion. So leave all that in the comment section. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter. Details in the description below. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the rest of the videos in my channel.